leverage the data and technology to make better decisions. And finally, be bold. Uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, if the leaders of city leaders of Medellin said we want to build urban gondola systems, people would have laughed at them. They had a vision and they executed it, and now uh, many cities across the world use urban gondola systems as a form of public transit. So have confidence, make smart decisions and have confidence in them. Um, cities that implement visionary plans will accelerate a shift to a sustainable future while also becoming world leaders um, in attracting talent and business and investment. I would ask the three of you what you think, because I live in Sao Paulo, and it's one of the biggest cities in the world. We have approximately 20 million people living there, and we are, these years, like we are living kind of a like transition. So from the car system, car mindset, to the, the, the pedestrians, to a people, more human uh, mindset. But what I see is we are like in the middle of a war, actually. Like the car owners, they, they simply don't like the idea of pedestrians having the, 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 the right to belong to the city, you know, to walk from here to there. And, the pedestrian, and then there are the bikers, and then there are the taxi drivers. I mean, like many actors, each one of them, they are like kind of like, no, 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 this is my space, this is my right, I have the right to do this, I have the right to do that. And I, I don't want you to have the right as well of the city. So this human, um, war, like this human um, miscommunication, you know, what, what do you think about it? Because systems, we, 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 we know a lot of good cases, like amazing cases all around the world, but what about the human fact? Yeah, I think that's a really good point, is that planning policy, smart policy will only get you so far, ultimately politics will make decisions. Mm -hmm. um, I think if properly a street can accommodate everyone, including, you know, a lot of what we didn't talk about is like the goods and shipping that occurs on roads, for example, they play a role in stimulating the economy. Um, so if you look at shit like big trucks on roads all the way to a pedestrian, um, that, that's a quite the extreme. And ultimately a great design network will be able to enable the free flowing of goods as well as someone to safely get from X to Z, walking, biking, rollerblading, however they want. Um, but I think you're right that the, even the language you use is something that I've experienced a lot in the North American context. The war on cars needs to stop. This this shouldn't happen, um, and I think it it does get popularized in the media because it it is politics. So I think it's I think it, it's it, it, the transition will take a while, but also also if you make it easy for people to adapt um, those alternative lifestyles, and and also giving them an opportunity to try test it out in a safe environment. For example, it's not everyone that will feel comfortable riding a bike on a main street. So how do you encourage them to do it in a maybe safer environment or take an alternative form? I do think this transition phase will take a while and, and wear a couple different hats depending on who you are and the role you play. As a person, but also ultimately what you do for a living. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, So that's actually you know a constant battle that we are also facing. And uh, I wanted to, you know, give the example of the Delhi Metro versus the Delhi Bus Rapid Transit System, and um, how the the different ways they were presented to the public. So the Metro is really, really uh, expensive to build and to construct and all that, and it is doing a lot of good for Delhi. But the buses are taking a lot more number of people. Like the metro is taking only 4% of the people, while the buses are taking 40% of the people. So that is the kind of difference that we are seeing. But the metro played it, as uh, Jesse spoke about, the politics extremely well. 
they first made it in East Delhi, which is like a more uh, rundown neighborhood where there aren't any voices to oppose it. They made it a success over there. Uh, they may have, you know, fine-tuned their argument, and they came to posh South Delhi last. So by the time it was first phase and second phase were done, the the poorer parts of the city had the metro and the richer parts didn't have. So at that point of time, the richer parts were begging for the metro to come there. But the bus rapid transit system, they said they they were engineers who did this from Indian Institute of Technology. So they could only think of the engineering solution. And they did not think of a political solution. So they took the most difficult corridor in the city. And they said, if we solve it here, it is solved everywhere. So they picked up this corridor, which is in South Delhi, which has the highest car ownership. And they took away two lanes of the road, and they built it over there. Now, if you look at the numbers, that system actually worked. Because there was a 19% improvement in travel time. But that is for, that is a per person. So that means that the number of people that were going in the buses could go 31% faster. And the number of people going in cars and private vehicles went 11% slower. So overall there was a 19% improvement. But the car lobby is much, much, much stronger. So last year they demolished the BRT. So you also have to, you know, understand your city, go where it is, where, where you